Now at 10, a grisly discovery in the backyard of a home. A man's body is found, and a woman who rented a room from him is under arrest. Plus, police officers opened fire on a passing car, why they pulled out their weapons, and what happened next. And robbers try to raid a marijuana dispensary, but the clerk fights back with an unusual weapon. Now on the News at 10. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. We begin with breaking news in Bakersfield, where six people are dead in what police describe as a mass shooting. The gunman shot and killed himself at the end of a police pursuit following the bloody rampage. It all began when the gunman and his wife went to a trucking business and confronted another man. That's when sheriff's officials say he opened fire, killing the man. He then turned the gun on his wife and a third victim at that business. We're told the husband then confronted two more people at a residence nearby, killing both of them. He then carjacked a vehicle with a woman and child inside. They were both able to escape. At the end of a short police pursuit, the suspect turned the gun on himself. Investigators say at least 30 people witnessed the attack. The motive for the shooting is unclear tonight. The victim's identities have not yet been released. Now to breaking news in Montebello, where police have closed a freeway and several roads as they work to shut down an illegal street takeover. Tim Lynn is overhead in Sky 5. Tim? Well, as you can see, it's all calm here at the shops in Montebello, formerly known as the Montebello Town Center. Let's go to some video that was shot earlier from the ground. Hundreds of cars came here to the uh, Montebello Town Center and did a takeover, but right away at Montebello Police Department, supported by L.A. County Sheriffs and California Highway Patrol, descended on the scene here and started breaking up that group. You can see that hundreds of vehicles... And we've lost the audio feed and the video feed as well from Sky 5. Tim Lynn reporting again this street takeover has been apparently successfully broken up by law enforcement in Montebello tonight. A woman is in custody tonight following a standoff at a Harbor Gateway home where police found a man's body in the backyard. KTLA's Rick Chambers is live outside the home with more on the gruesome discovery. Rick. Yeah, share that victim's home is over my right shoulder here, the one with the porch lights on. Still a little bit of police activity out here at the scene, but we know that the victim is about 62 years old, had lived in this neighborhood for a number of years, but neighbors tell us they hadn't seen him in four or five days. Those same neighbors tell us that he had rented a room to a woman and that that female roommate may have had a drug problem and he was trying to evict her. But we don't know if any of that played a role in the killing. The coroner removes the decomposing body of a man from a home here in the Harbor Gateway neighborhood. His name's Leon. He's a good neighbor. Um, I think he's a mechanic, and um, he's just been a very nice guy over the years, nice conversations and things like that. He worked on cars, friendly guy, waved all the time, you know. He was a good, friendly guy to me. The neighbor, who doesn't want to be identified, says that he was simply standing outside this morning. This lady approached me and said they killed my friend. And she was real hysterical. So he ran down the street to the fenced in yard. And we looked over, I seen a lady come out of a shed and run into the house. That woman, the victim's roommate, had to be forced from the home by a police tactical team and then would later be arrested. The body of the man who had been shot was found on a raised back patio, wrapped in what looked like a tarp, lying on a dolly. Generally speaking, when someone passed, they notify the appropriate people and appropriate people respond. People don't wrap people in anything and remove them from the place where they pass. In a garden area just below the body, police found digging tools and a hole where the suspect may have been planning to bury the body. But why the man was killed and when is still unknown. Back here live at the scene, we've got that one female suspect in custody, but the other woman who ran to neighbors yelling that a friend had been killed, she fled. And at this hour, we don't know her involvement in all of this. In the Harbor Gateway neighborhood near Gardena, 
I'm Rick Chambers. Guys, I'll throw it back to you in Hollywood. Rick, thank you. A suspected thief is dead and two others critically injured after a police pursuit comes to a crashing end on a Santa Ana street. Now authorities believe they may be part of a bigger burglary ring. Inside the car, police find handbags, clothing, and shoes they believe are tied to at least one commercial burglary in Orange County. KTLA 5's Mary Beth McDade is in Santa Ana. She joins us live with the very latest. Mary Beth. Well, Sharon Micah, Santa Ana police tell us that all three suspects are from Los Angeles. And although this deadly crash brought an end to the alleged crime spree, they believe that these guys came down to Orange County to target more than just one upscale boutique. Burglary suspects fleeing from police, lose control of their SUV, and crash into a tree in Santa Ana last night, killing the man in the front passenger seat, identified as 19-year-old Louis Araguin. Police say the driver, 20-year-old Giante Sessions, and the back passenger, Trayvon McNeil, had to be extricated from the infinity and then taken to a nearby trauma center. We heard the noise of the uh, police, and then we saw the, uh, the car was totally damaged, like completely gone. This resident says the car quickly caught fire when it smashed into the tree on Chestnut near Lyons. First thing I, I saw was taking the fire extinguisher, and I took that and we take out the, the fire. He says he heard the guy in the back trying to get out. But that was impossible for him to get out because his body from the, from the uh, middle part to, to the bottom I was trapped inside the car. Police say also inside the car, stolen merchandise from an upscale Tustin boutique that sells pricey designer purses and shoes. Police say the suspects were spotted by an Orange County Sheriff's deputy fleeing from that Tustin shop minutes before the deadly crash. He sees suspects wearing gloves running from the area of the store to a blacked out vehicle. They get in the blacked out vehicle. That vehicle leaves at a high rate of speed. Authorities say as police pursued them into the east side of Santa Ana, the SUV was going approximately 100 miles per hour when it hit a dip in the road and lost control. They were fleeing from the officer, a pursuit, a high speed pursuit, which led to the death of the front passenger of this vehicle. So the driver in this case can be held responsible for that death. And please tell us that the driver of the vehicle is also wanted on a $50,000 arrest warrant for a robbery out of Los Angeles. For now, reporting live here in Santa Ana, Mary Beth McDade, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. New body cam video just released shows LAPD officers opening fire on a passing car in South Los Angeles. It happened in July. Officers responding to a routine call thought a driver was opening fire on them. It turns out it was a car to car shooting and one of the drivers had just carjacked a woman. Casey Montoya live outside LAPD headquarters as police are still looking for the carjacking suspect. Casey. Now, a pregnant woman was carjacked, kidnapped, and then witnessed a shooting, but the man responsible is still out there, so police are hoping releasing this new body cam video will help catch him. A chaotic scene in South Los Angeles as police body cameras capture a car-to-car -car shooting. Just after 10 p.m. on July 29th, two LAPD officers were responding to a call on West 29th Street near Normandy Avenue when they heard gunfire. The, thing is that the, baby is crying. the officers were interviewing two people as the shots rang out. When the body camera video is slowed down, you can see the suspect's car on the left, the intended victim on the right. After firing four shots, the suspect turns onto the street toward the officers and they return fire. The other officer's body cam shows a different angle of the shooting. Investigators recovered four 380 caliber discharge casings at the scene. The suspect's vehicle was located approximately one block away on Brighton Avenue and contained gunshot holes on the driver's side. Detectives also located the other car with bullet holes in the passenger side. I, 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 to somebody, they just stole my car. Police say 10 minutes after the shooting, the owner of the car involved called 911 saying she'd been carjacked and kidnapped in her own car. Did you see the person yeah. in your car? <laughs> it was the young guy. He had dresses on his face. Yeah, what? <laughs> he had dresses on his face. I just grabbed my car. Okay, ma'am. 
Um, I need you to take a deep breath from me, okay? Take a deep, deep breath from me because I can't understand you. You're okay. okay. Take a take a deep breath, okay? Are you injured? No, I just I just ran. I just ran. I'm so frustrated. I just ran. I was so scared. The frantic victim later told police she was in the passenger seat of her vehicle at 29th and Normandy when the suspect fired his weapon. Although she was in the car with him, she was only able to provide a brief description telling detectives the man was white or Hispanic with a tattoo on his face. And no one was injured in the car to car shooting or that officer involved shooting, but the investigation is ongoing and police are hoping more witnesses will come forward. If you know anything, you're asked to call LAPD. Back to you. All right, Casey, thank you. A man who police say was throwing rocks at passing cars is in the hospital tonight after he was shot and wounded by police. It happened near the Central Avenue on-ramp to the eastbound 10 freeway in Montclair. Police were called to the scene just before 6 o'clock. That's when they say the suspect, who had already damaged seven cars, started throwing rocks at their patrol car. They opened fire, wounding him. No one else was hurt in the incident, but we're told most of the vehicles sustained substantial damage. A firefighter in Kern County is recovering tonight from a serious injury while battling the water fire along the Interstate 5 in the Grapevine. The firefighter struck by a rolling boulder this afternoon. He was airlifted by a firefighting helicopter and flown straight to Kern County Medical Center. Tonight, he is in stable condition. The water fire has spread to 50 acres and fire crews have it 20 percent contained. Hurricane Florence is losing strength tonight. The massive storm seen here from space has been downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane. The National Hurricane Center is warning East Coast residents even as sustained winds are down to 110 miles an hour. Florence is still a life-threatening storm. Reporter Karen Kafa has the latest from Wilmington, North Carolina. We are on the wrong side of this storm. Strong warnings from authorities up and down the Carolina coast. Officials are bracing for impact as Hurricane Florence barrels toward the coast. This is going to be, you know, a Mike Tyson punch to the Carolina coast. Long lines wrapped around gas stations as thousands of people heeded evacuation orders. Law enforcement kept traffic flowing away from the coasts on Wednesday, just one direction on some major thoroughfares. <laughs> But as people flee the region, first responders are getting in place and authorities continue to urge the remaining residents to get out. Don't expect first responders to be able to get to you during the storm if you decide to stay. A forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center extends from Virginia to Alabama, putting more than 25 million people in her vast reach. Forecasters warn Florence's greatest threat may come after making landfall. It's expected to slowly crawl up the coast. Some areas will see damaging rain and hurricane force winds for more than 24 hours. Understand that the rain may last for days and will be measured in some places in feet and not inches. Here in the city of Wilmington, there is a voluntary evacuation in effect, which explains some of the foot traffic on the streets behind me. That market behind me doing a pretty brisk business tonight as people who plan to ride out the storm pick up supplies. The first tropical storm force winds from Florence are expected here tomorrow. In Wilmington, North Carolina tonight, I'm Karen Kafa. Now back to you. All right, now over to meteorologist Vera Jimenez. She continues our coverage on Hurricane Florence and tracking her path tonight. Oh, yeah, it is going to be really tough out there. Uh, yeah, despite the fact that uh, Hurricane Florence is now a Category 2 and has definitely been downgraded and those winds are slowing down, the movement, however, is not slowing down. It is still moving in a northwesterly direction at 17 miles per hour, and it's still packing wind gusts of 130 miles per hour. So it is going to be uh, moving inland rather quickly at this point. It is now 280 miles east to southeast of uh, North North Carolina and as you can see uh, as we make our way towards tomorrow it is going to be uh, moving on shore very quickly and those hurricane force winds from the center out extend about 80 miles and so as you mentioned in some areas they are going to be measuring that rainfall in feet and uh, if you translate that into inches which is what we get it here as in uh, about 40 inches in some areas in North Carolina South Carolina uh, maybe 20 so it is going to be a really tough situation 
for them. Uh, in the meantime, back out here, not bad at all. Take a look. We do have uh, temperatures that were slightly below average. All of that is because of the onshore flow. The marine layer is already building and developing, as you can see here from our Huntington Beach camera. You can tell by the way the mist there is reflecting off the lights, uh, but we are going to see plenty of sunshine by tomorrow afternoon and temperatures towards the southern end of our viewing area are actually going to warm up by a couple of degrees. We'll have those details coming up in a bit for now. Back to you guys. All right, Vera, thank you. Friends and relatives gathered tonight in Valinda to remember the victims of a murder suicide that left three members of one family dead. The tragedy unfolded Monday night when gunshots rang out in the normally quiet neighborhood. Investigators say 16 year old Janita Griego and her teenage son Ezekiel were sitting on their back patio Monday night when her brother, 64 year old Thomas Stratton, shot them both in the head. Stratton then killed himself. Friends and family are remembering Janita, known as Miss Jenny, to her students. Unfortunately, her life and her son's life was ended rather um, abruptly and we are here to show our support and our respect because Miss Jenny was absolutely loved and adored by everyone. As you can tell, everybody here is um, in support for Miss Jenny. Investigators say they believe Janita Griego wanted to evict her brother and the two argued over the ownership of the family dogs. The driver who police say hit and killed a Long Beach pedestrian after the two got into an argument has been charged with murder. 29-year-old Asak Horn Hoare has pleaded not guilty. Authorities say he deliberately ran over Victor Herrera, a father of seven, and then left the scene. It happened as the victim's children watched in horror. Police later spotted what appeared to be a drunk driver. Officers realized he was the suspected hit and run driver and arrested him. If convicted, Hoare faces a maximum sentence of 25 years to life in state prison. In Riverside County, the man charged with killing a pregnant mother and her unborn child appeared in court today. 28-year-old Marcos Forestal pled not guilty to charges of gross vehicular manslaughter connected to the crash Sunday night in San Jacinto. Forestal live streamed the crash scene instead of helping Chris Still Kincaid, who was driving home from work and trapped inside the wreckage. Kincaid's husband says she was taken off life support this morning and her organs harvested to help save other lives. Dozens of people, drugs and weapons are discovered during a police raid on what was supposed to be an abandoned building on Hollywood Boulevard. 59 people were let out of the building overnight and detained for living there illegally. Some were ticketed for trespassing and police also say there will likely be arrests related to guns and drugs being sold in that building. Some tenants claimed they had signed leases with a man who said he was the property manager and were paying rent. Police say this alleged property manager knew about safety hazards and code violations, but did nothing. Now to breaking news in Valley Glen, where one person is in grave condition after a hit and run crash. Tim Lynn is overhead in Sky 5. Tim. Uh, you can see LAPD along with CHP working here in the 12400 block of Victory in Valley Glen. About 9.30 this evening, an auto ran over a pedest pedestrian right here on Victory, but then fled the scene. Right now they're trying to figure out exactly uh, the identity of that driver and vehicle that fled the scene, so they're looking for witnesses and evidence. That uh, pad, or the uh, ped that was hit was taken to the local area hospital, as you said, in grave condition. So you can see right now the... Uh, 12400 block of victory is shut down here while this investigation continues. So that's the latest from over Valley Glen. Let me set it back down to you. Tim Lynn and Sky 5, thank you. Victims and first responders are honored today on the 10 year anniversary of the deadliest crash in Metrolink history. 25 people were killed and more than 100 others were injured when a Metrolink commuter train collided head on with a freight train near Chatsworth. The impact left passengers trapped inside crumple, crumpled rail cars as rescuers worked to free them from the rubble. At a ceremony in Chatsworth, this afternoon, those who died in the horrific crash were remembered, and the first responders who came to the rescue were honored for their bravery. But it was a tragedy not just of life and limb, but of loss to family and friends. A harsh reality of life's moments. No one present that day can erase those memories. 
three years ago, the commuter rail line installed a $200 million computer system called Positive Train Control. The system sounds an alert if there is a stopped or oncoming train on the same track. President Trump's former campaign chairman Paul Manafort is reportedly talking to special counsel Robert Mueller's team about a possible plea deal. Manafort's second criminal trial is set to begin next week. The 69-year-old is charged with fraud, money laundering, and failing to register as a foreign agent when he lobbied on behalf of a political party in the Ukraine. In his first trial last month, he was convicted on eight counts of tax evasion and bank fraud. Manafort has yet to be sentenced for those crimes, and there are no specifics on the possible plea deal in the second case. Still ahead on the KTLA 5 News at 10, mayhem in a marijuana shop. Watch as a worker uses an unusual weapon to fight off four robbers looking to raid the dispensary. Ending the e-cigarette epidemic, the alarming warning from the FDA tonight as health officials work to crack down on teen vaping. Plus, Kimberly. I'm Kimberly Chang. This insta-famous pink wall vandalized early this morning. Coming up, the obscene message and how visitors responded to it. Signs of life from the Dodgers, but would they get the needed help on the scoreboard? We're going to break down the NL West race, and we're all over the NFL tonight. Got a Rams report. Chargers have an update on Joey Bosa. And a blindfolded LeBron James hanging out with Ellen. That's coming up in our viral video of the night. Surveillance video of a pot shop near Toronto, Canada. Well, four would-be robbers entered the store and pulled out bear mace to try and subdue the workers. But the manager wasn't having it, having it. He grabbed a large water pipe, commonly known as a bong, then went after them, hitting one of them and shattering the glass. The manager eventually scared off all the would-be thieves. He and his small dog were treated for exposure to the mace. The 70th Primetime Emmy Awards will be taking place next Monday and soon after the attention shifts to music with the Ohana Festival once again in Dana Point. KTLA's Doug Kolk joins us live from LA Live for a preview. Hi Doug. Well Mike and Sharon, only hours they're going to roll out the carpet for the Emmys this year, which I hear might be gold. But the setup you see behind me, that's all from last weekend. That's the Creative Arts Emmys, which took place Saturday and Sunday. But come Monday, that's the real Emmys. The Emmys, in which uh, we'll broadcast Monday night, and we will start our live coverage at 1 o'clock. Now, like you said, switching gears a bit, we're only weeks away from my favorite festival, the Ohana Festival. It features some of my favorite artists, like Eddie Vedder, Mumford & Sons, and someone I was recently introduced to, Nikki Lane. So you've been around the world. I've been around the world. You call me on telephone. You've played many festivals. Many, many festivals. Are you prepared for Ohana Festival? I am very eager for Ohana Festival. Like, I don't think we play um, festivals that are in quite this beautiful a setting. When you're talking about sharing a stage with Mumford and & Sons. Beck. Yeah, yeah, yes. Eric Church, and of course, Brother Eddie. It's very exciting. It's fun um, to kind of be able to set the tone for something to try to catch some of their huge fan base. You know, we're trying to become as big as Mumford and Sons. So to get to open in front of them, to see some of their fans, to get that crossover, and to see what happens when we come back, it's like that's why we go out and chase these festivals. All right, you just saw it. Now it's time to give away a pair of passes. We have two general admission three-day passes that will go to one lucky winner right now. Just text the word OHANA to 515151 for your chance to win. Again, the OHANA Festival takes place September 28th through the 30th. It's, again, one of my favorites. Mike and Cher, we'd have to wish good luck to all. Yes, we do. All right, Doug Colk, thank you. Coming up here, recovering a stolen Renoir. A famous painting stolen by the Nazis has been returned to its rightful owner. How the FBI was able to track it down.
shedding pounds and fur. A look at how an underwater treadmill is helping an overweight cat slim down. Now at 1030, the famous pink wall on Melrose Avenue gets punked with a not so pretty makeover. The wall is popular among selfie takers, but today people woke up to find the pretty pink color covered in graffiti. Kimberly Chang is live from the Fairfax district with reactions tonight, Kimberly. Micah Sherritt's gone now, but earlier today, an obscenity in huge spray painted letters covered this famous pink wall. The message took a jab at all the people who stop here to take selfies, but that didn't slow them down one bit. Everybody said, make sure you check out the pink wall on Mills Roads. So I made sure I came here. Pink wall? Hot photo spot. The iconic pink wall outside the Paul Smith store on Melrose Avenue, where people come from all over the globe to strike a pose, got an unwelcome makeover Wednesday morning. Someone graffitied, go bleep your selfie. And one Instagram user captured the mysterious person in the act. Everyone was kind of shocked. Okay, now there's this new thing on that same wall. Like, what is it about? What's going on? Who did it? Locals say it attracted even more attention than usual. Photos of the explicit message flooded the hashtag pink wall. Some wondered if the message had a deeper meaning. Well, I think that people can be a little bit annoying with their um, social media constantly, but it's normal to take selfies, so. Go bleep yourself. <laughs> bleep, your, oh, bleep yourself. The wall was repainted in a matter of hours, back to its solid Pepto Bismo shade. Wow, well, we still are taking selfies, so. The graffiti will forever be in the social media timeline, but given the amount of foot traffic in just a few hours, new selfies will soon wash over the old. I've seen a few pictures, it just, it really stands out, so. Where'd you see the pictures? On Instagram and Twitter, uh, Facebook, so I was like, yeah, I definitely have to come check it out. That was on my to-do list. I was kind of hoping they would keep it so people would not take selfies. <laughs> As for the business, they're not commenting and told police they don't plan to file a report. If I was the owner, I wouldn't be complaining at all. I mean, the price of the paint is a lot cheaper than the marketing I would have paid. The graffiti was signed Thrash, which points to a well-known underground street artist, but that unidentified person has not claimed responsibility for it. Meanwhile, police say the business has not filed a complaint, so there is no investigation. Reporting live in the Fairfax District, Kimberly Chang, KTLA 5 News. In tonight's Health Smart, the Food and Drug Administration is taking action against teen vaping, calling it a youth e-cigarette epidemic. The FDA has sent 1,100 letters to businesses warning them about selling e-cigarettes to minors, and more than 100 stores have been fined for continuing to violate the restrictions on sales to customers under the age of 18. The crackdown is the largest coordinated enforcement effort in FDA history. A priceless painting by one of the world's great masters stolen by the Nazis is now back with its rightful owner. The painting by Pierre Auguste Renoir had been had belonged to Sylvie Stolzer's grandfather, a once prominent art collector in Paris. But in 1941, during World War II, the Nazis stole the painting from a bank vault in Paris where the collection was being stored. About five years ago, uh, Stolzer discovered that two women in the garden was being auctioned off by a private collector. Her attorney contacted the auction house, which brought in the FBI. The owner voluntarily gave up the painting to be returned to its rightful owner. And I'm very thankful to be able to show my beloved family, wherever they are, that after all what they've been through, there is a justice. And a correction on her name, it is Sulitzer. She won't be keeping the painting for long, though. The French and German governments compensated her family for the estimated value of the stolen collection. Now that the Renoir has been returned, she has to pay them back. And the only way she can do that is by selling the painting. Sulitzer and the FBI won't say how much it's worth. Wow. 
Straight ahead on the news at 10 and 11, a violent home invasion. Armed intru intruders storm into a home, tying up the residents and stealing several valuables. The alarming attack caught on camera. Plus Vera. And thank you, Cheryl. We'll also be taking a look at that extended forecast. Outside, it's starting to get a little hazy. We're expecting more of that marine layer to return again. However, tomorrow it is going to clear out just as nicely as it did this afternoon. Temperatures, depending on where you are, are going to be a little bit warmer. And other spots, well, you're not really going to feel a change. I'll have those details coming up. The biggest and most expensive iPhone yet, and a watch that could save your life. Rich DeMiro has a look at the Big Apple announcement in tonight's TechSmart. Hi there. Now you can access KTLA 5 News through Amazon's Alexa and Google Home. Just go to ktla.com slash speakers to find out how. Well, if you hate going to the gym, here's some inspiration for you. A 12-year-old cat named George has gained so much weight that he's now forced to run on a treadmill underwater. Yeah. George's owner, Amy Good, says he weighed 17 and a half pounds when he started and was on the verge of developing diabetes. So George got his own personal trainer who suggested the underwater treadmill, and he's handling it remarkably well. He's up to six minutes three times a week. Doctors say in five or six months, George will shed five pounds like he sheds hair. I can't believe that he lets them do that. Right. He likes it, it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's like a spa. You know, this is going to sound really silly, but um, I didn't think cats like going in Exactly. The water. That's why I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I'm not crazy? No, no. Oh, cats don't okay. like the water, <laughs> usually. But George yeah, does. Right. George does. Yeah. I, you know, I guess it's... <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> he feels know. better. A little light. Yeah, and then yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the licking thing to bathe. Yeah, that's what they do, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I, obviously, I don't have a cat because I have no idea how they bathe. I used to pick up the strays, but they never, they drank the milk I put out, and then they left me. So I switch to dogs and there you have it uh, out to the <laughs> weather photo we go the beautiful sunset tonight by uh, this is actually Conchetta Ellis and this is the second time she sends weather photos and they're really spectacular she must be a professional photographer look at that uh, beautiful this is what it looked like the sun rays beaming through those clouds uh, over San Pedro gorgeous gorgeous view thank you so much for sharing your weather photo continue to send them in because we love sharing them 67 degrees right now over LAX West southwest winds at 7 miles per hour, 64 in Oxnard, 71 in Santa Ana, and 70 in Riverside. Here are the current winds. Uh, earlier this evening, we were looking at double-digit wind speeds. Now we're down to singles, which is nice, but we're still experiencing some nice onshore flow. Westerly winds over downtown Los Angeles at 7 miles per hour, out of the northwest at 6 miles per hour in Long Beach. Your satellite radar picture continues to show that area of low pressure and the associated trough. That will be the pattern, at least for the next couple of days. It's going to shift a little to the north and a little to the east, and then it's going to kind of pick up and move back to the west. Anyway, it's going to move around a little bit. And it's going to allow that ridge of high pressure to expand and move back closer to Southern California. And that's when we will see a change in our weather pattern. And that mostly means that we are going to see temperatures warm up. But thank goodness we are not going to be in the 100s. Now it looks like the marine layer is going to be pretty limited. In fact, at this point, it looks like most of it already moved on shore and is starting to move back over the Pacific because that's what it looked like overnight. And as you saw, there was very little gray on that map, and that's generally what means sometimes it moves in earlier and later. Uh, you've heard me mention this before, if you're a regular viewer, that sometimes that marine layer is really difficult to forecast, not just for people like me, but for the folks at the National Weather Service. They have a hard time with it, too. Sometimes they put it in the report uh, that they send out, and they go, eh, going to be a little tricky tonight. Uh, and so that's kind of what we had, because earlier this evening during the 6 o'clock hour, we still had a lot of that marine layer during those overnight hours into tomorrow morning. Look at tomorrow's daytime highs. Again, a little warm. Van Nuys, 90 degrees. Woodland Hills, 86. Not bad in Woodland Hills. 82 in Hollywood, Bell and Bellflower. Our beaches are going to be close to the mid-70s. Irvine and Rancho Santa Margarita, yesterday you were 80 degrees. Today you were 80. Tomorrow, 81. And it looks like low 90s for most of the Inland Empire. So San Fernando, San Gabriel Valley. Uh, 
Upper 80s tomorrow, some clouds. Well, maybe no clouds now. You just saw the forecast for the overnight clouds. And then low 90s on Friday and Saturday. For the coastal basin, we're looking at low 80s on Thursday, Friday, mid 80s, and about the same on Saturday and Sunday, 84. And then for Orange County, we're looking at 86, peaking on Friday and Saturday with 90 degrees, and then back down to 88. And for the Inland Empire, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Uh, 95 is going to be the warmest day, and then low 90s for the extended forecast. All right, Vera, thank you. Darren's here talking Rams. A lot of people in the city excited about the Rams, the way they started, the, the offense that they have, the potential, all the defensive players that they've added. Uh, they'll unpack the Cardinals game plan today. We've got a report from Thousand Oaks. Also, we've got a Joey Bosa update and in baseball, signs of life from the Dodgers. And they did some scoreboard watching tonight. Did they get the good news they needed from Denver? We got the whole NL West picture for you. And LeBron James hanging out with Ellen, enjoying an adult beverage, blindfolded no less. That's coming up in our viral video of the night. Now, KTLA 5 Sports Final with Darren Horton. Powered by your Southern California Ford dealers. Well, it is hard to understand what's transpired between the Dodgers and the Reds this season. Cincinnati, worst team in the Central, 22 games back, yet they swept four from L.A. Uh, here at Dodger Stadium back in May. And then they took the first two games of this current series, today in position to complete a season sweep of the Dodgers. And the Reds struck first. Jose Peraza takes Ross Stripling out. This is Peraza. in the first inning. Cincinnati took a 1-0 lead. The Dodgers did have some answers in the fourth. Jock Peterson ties it up with a tape measure job. Look at this thing go to right center. And they weren't done. Same inning after a Muncie single. Yasmani powers up. Thought he got all of it, but look at the kid here. He reaches over, catches it, and that's fan interference, so it's an RBI double. Then in the fifth, two arm for JT. He rips one to center. This little Puigi comes home. Peterson would follow, beats the throw. Made it 4-1. L.A. kept it rolling. J.T. and Grandall, three ribbies apiece. Dodgers back on track. 8-1 your final. So next question is, what happened in that Rockies D-backs game? Well, it went down to the final inning. One out, bottom ninth. D-backs up 4-3. And Yoshi Harano can't finish the job. Delay D.J. LeMayu with a walk-off two-run shot. That's your ball game. Dodgers could have been within a half game of first. Instead, they remain a game and a half back in the West. They do pick up a game in the wild card, just two behind the Cardinals, who they will see tomorrow as the two teams open up a four-game set in St. Louis. Yes, the playoffs have arrived. Angels playing out the string, taking on the Rangers at the big A, bottom second. Two on for Francisco Arcia. He goes down the line and right drives in two so they scored two in the second they added four more in the third the 30 year old rookie struck again Jose Fernandez two run shot Angels cruise 8-1 your final now to the Rams who quickly turn the page following that big Monday night win this week they've got their home opener Cardinals coming to town David Pengelor at practice today in Thousand Oaks filed this report Darren, we certainly know getting through the NFL season without injuries for any NFL team is pretty much 0%. And right out of the gate, Farrell Cooper, the punch slash kick returner, he's been placed in the IR. JoJo Natson, all five foot seven inches of him, he was cut prior to the season. He's been put back on the roster. He will start in that position against the Cardinals. As for this ball club, yes, they are certainly ready for the home opener Sunday against the Cardinals. It's going to be a great challenge. You know, these guys will be ready to go. Like we mentioned, they got a lot of great players. I got a lot of respect for Coach Wilkes. You know, he'll have his football team ready to go. Uh, super excited about it. Uh, had the opportunity to uh, play in the Coliseum for the second time. Uh, Got six plays the other the last time, but no, it's a great atmosphere. I'm looking forward to it. And Darren, I heard you and Micah kind of make a joke a little bit about my arm wrestling, possibly Sue. I'm going to work on that. One on one arm wrestling with Sue. He just likes to be called Sue. You know, that's it. Just call him Sue. I do like the Rams big on Sunday. Ping, I would pay to see that. As for the Chargers, looks like Joey Bosa is no closer to being ready to come back. That bone bruise in his left foot is still ailing him. 
So he's going to miss his second game of the season this week two matchup with the Bills. Missoula Butler with it. Gordon cuts through. They go to Barrett. He'll turn and shoot for the win. Oh, bingo! Yeah, the legendary voice of the Clippers, Ralph Lawler, announced today that he will be retiring at the end of the 2018-19 season. Lawler has been with the team for 40 years. He joined the then San Diego Clippers for their first season in California in 1978 and has called over 3,000 games since then. And the Seattle Storm are officially the WNBA champions. The Storm completed a three-game sweep of the Washington Mystics in the WNBA Finals. Brenna Stewart was unstoppable. She put up 30 points tonight. Final score 98-82. This is Seattle's third WNBA championship. Quick break still to come. We've got your viral video of the night. The King making the TV rounds. LeBron James having some fun with Ellen. Ford Sports Final back in a moment. I got it with no hands. No hands. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Yeah, that's new lake with LeBron James making the TV rounds. He was on the Ellen show today. The King teaming up with movie star Channing Tatum to take part in a series of dares to raise money for charity. Among the notable dares, LeBron had to take a shot of tequila with no hands and eat ice cream with hot sauce on it. Ow. Each dare LeBron and Tatum completed raised $10,000 for the I Promise School in Akron, Ohio, a school which was founded by LeBron <laughs> earlier in the year. A little kiwi? It's a little kiwi, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know that. You know that? Yeah. In total, they raised $100,000 really? for the school. Which I love that story. I love LeBron's That's great. school. It, he, yeah. what, a, what an awesome uh, thing he is doing. Very good. See you at 11, Darren. Thank All you. Right. In TechSmart, Apple has made its highly anticipated new product announcement. Our own Rich Ramiro was there, and he has details from Cupertino. Apple's big special event just wrapped up, and we now know details on all three new models of the iPhone. So let's start right in the middle. There's a new iPhone XS. This device starts at $999, and it has a 5.8-inch screen, plus an improved camera system, also better battery life. Then you have a bigger phone. You have the iPhone XS Max. So the rumors were right on the Max. This is the largest screen we've ever seen on an iPhone, 6.5 five inches. The battery life is also an hour and a half greater on that. But the price tag, brace for it, it starts at $1,100 for that device. Now on the lower end, which is still a very good phone, uh, we have the new iPhone XR. And this device starts at $750. It also has an LCD screen. They're calling it Liquid Retina. So it's a really nice display, but Apple has saved some money there. All right, some other things that got a big reaction here is the Apple Watch Series 4. It's getting a lot of health features. It can detect when a person falls, which is a a really important health feature. It can also do an ECG right on your wrist. That's a quick rundown of what Apple announced at today's event. If you want more coverage, you can go to my website, richontech.tv. I'll have some more hands-on with the new devices tomorrow morning on the KTLA 5 Morning News. Reporting from Cupertino, I'm Rich DeMiro, KTLA 5 News, back to you. That is it for the news at 10. Next at 11, we are following breaking news in Bakersfield. A gunman goes on a rampage killing five people before turning the gun on himself. The latest on the developing story. A violent crime spree in South LA. We are live as police search for a carjacker who kidnapped a pregnant woman and opened fire near officers.